Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the video today. We're talking about cardio, why you need it, who needs it, and more in particular, how to implement it for your goals, whether you're a power lifter, weight lifter, strength athlete, physique goals, general health goals. We're gonna lock it in, teach y'all the best way to implement cardio. So if y'all are power lifters, strength athletes, strong men, strong men slightly different because within the sport of strong men, there's conditioning. So we can tap into that slightly differently, but I guess more so weight lifters, even bodybuilders to some extent and power lifters. The name of the game is fatigue management. And so hopefully you have a good coach or a program that you're following and they'll do that within that spectrum of two uh, blocks. But within the cardio there, one, I think it's probably healthy and underrated for most people just to simply warm up. We'll talk about another videos to prevent injuries and just feel better, feel stronger on your workout days is just do 10 to 20 minutes on an assault bike, on a uh, treadmill. Just getting moving is gonna be so important. Shown some benefits in recovery as well. If you're worried about recovery and you're taking all these stupid supplements or wasting your money and time, just walk after you train or even the day all after. If you're trying to cut weight, it's gonna be a calorie game, it's gonna be a food game, and you can add in and sprinkle in a little bit of walking. One, again, for general health, baseline of fitness recovery, and for burning a little bit of calories. You start to get into some sprints and too high impact of cardio or conditioning, and it's probably gonna negatively affect your lifting. And in powerlifting and bodybuilding, performance in the gym, resistance training, how much weight you move is so vital to what you do, building muscle and building strength, that it's probably just not even worth it. So, you know, number one is probably just a walk or an incline walk, walk outside. Number two is probably like an elliptical or an assault bike, um, but very moderate. We're talking like zone two stuff, right? So your heart rate's 80 to 120, like you're, you're very minimum and you're doing it 10, 20, 30 minutes, depending on your conditioning, your shape, and what your actual goals are, whether it's losing weight or just warming up. So again, like if you're walking and you're just trying to be healthy, you can do it totally a separate session. You know, even like small 10, 20, 30 minute walks throughout your day are great, just getting your steps in. Um, but even in your training, you do 10, 20 minutes, lift, and then another 10, 20 minutes, easy as cake. Um, for like general conditioning or like cardio, the law of specificity is across the board anything we do, right? You want to be good at basketball, you got to shoot a basketball. You want to be good at squats, you've got to practice a raw squat. It's specific of the movement, it's specific of the activity, that's what you have to do. Conditioning is where it gets a little weird. If you want to get like longer endurance, better endurance training, you don't have to run a marathon, but you just want to be able to go longer, harder, faster. Um, doing shorter bursts of like sprints or hit, high intensity interval training can complement and make you better at longer endurances. Um, if you want to get better at just sprints or power movements, right, whether you play basketball, football, your track and field, etc., having a general base of fitness is good, but training endurance doesn't necessarily help or impact your short bursts, right? It's different muscle fibers, different conditioning, different energy systems, um, where the vice versa does help. So if you want to get just good general conditioning, splitting your week up kind of similar to what I'm doing right now with my cut, where twice a week I'm doing some kind of higher intensity, um, like a Metcon metabolic conditioning where we're going 10, 20 minutes pretty hard in sprint intervals of some nature. Then once or twice a week, I'm doing a longer 30, 40, 50 minute bike ride at a pretty moderate pace, which would be considered low intensity. Um, and then the other day is just kind of like a recover day. So I'm walking or I'm doing a bike ride for 10 or 20 minutes, uh, just get my legs going. And again, I don't have any specific strength goals right now. And then in terms of like bodybuilding, yeah, I'm trying to put most of my efforts at building muscle and looking a little better. Um, but the, 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 the X factor in all of this is enjoying yourself. If you're not a pro athlete, you're not getting paid for it, we kinda gotta enjoy ourselves, right? Otherwise, one, we won't stick to it, and then two, why are we even doing it, right? We got a short time on this little planet to try to enjoy ourselves. So for me, that's how I lined up my conditioning to kinda enjoy it a little bit better. So, um, you know, big thing is like the joke, it's a meme um, when strength or lifters, power lifters, bodybuilders, weightlifters, see cardio, you know, they, they say it burns gains, ruins gains, loses gains, but most of them are just lazy. Um, it is true. If the, you know, if, the, if we have like 10 out of 10 blocks that we get to put our energy into in training and eight or nine of them are in endurance training and only one or two are in resistance training, yeah, building muscle is gonna be tough or holding onto that muscle. Our body is trying to find homeostasis. It's trying to find balance at all times. So depending on our food, the inputs we're giving it, the stimulus we're giving it, our sleep, etc it's going to optimize itself to do what tasks we're giving it. So if you're running all day and you're 200, even 210 pounds like me with a little bit of muscle, it's heavy. So your body's going to want to get rid of that muscle. It's going to want to get rid of fat tissue also, but it's going to want to get rid of muscle because mo most of the muscles that are big in your body are actually type two, which are like explosive, athletic, fast twitch muscles. 
And when you're running 30, 40, 50 longer minutes or bike riding or skating, doesn't matter, long endurance stuff, rowing, your body doesn't want to hold on to that muscle because it's too taxing on the system. That's why, again, if you're trying to cut weight or something for weightlifting uh, or powerlifting, a light walk, but most of it's gonna come from your nutrition. Um, you can build muscle, right? If we look at the opposite style athletes, we look at running backs, we look at linebackers, we look at sprinters, throwers, people that do explosive movements, some of them can be ultra, insanely jacked because they're lifting weights, they have a baseline of fitness, and then any added fitness they're doing is explosive. So sprinting, throwing, jumping, a lot of those have more to do with the fast type, the type two fast twitch muscles. So a lot of it is how you organize what you need. If you look at the bodies of endurance runners, some of it is um, because of what they do, and some of it is if you're built that way, you're more likely to find the sport of, it, of, of marathon running. Because there's jacked ones too, if you look at my boy Nick Bear. Nick Bear has held a lot of muscle, but the argument isn't, oh, Nick Bear's jacked and he runs marathons. That doesn't mean marathons make you jacked because if Nick, which he has done, focused more on powerlifting or bodybuilding, he obviously puts on a lot more lean muscle tissue, right? So his boundaries or borders look different than ours from being skinny endurance guy to jack bodybuilder. Um, but that doesn't mean that he couldn't optimize more by taking away some of that endurance. On top of that, um, again, we have the building blocks, which is just an analogy of how much time or bodily energy we have to put into training, whether it be endurance, sprinting, or lifting. The other one is calories. Our body will utilize those calories on what we give it. So if we're spending all our calories running, et cetera, et cetera, we probably won't have the energy to rebuild the muscles from training. A lot of it, just like life, where you dictate your thoughts, where you dictate your energy is what's gonna grow. What do they say? The, the grass is greener where you put water. So wherever you put your mental and physical energy, if it's into bench pressing, you're gonna get better at bench pressing, right? If it's into endurance running, it's that. So it's how do you spread it out and plan it perfectly? You can be decent at both, but it's gonna be very difficult to, to really optimize your strength and physique while optimizing your endurance running. So like I said before, a little bit of cardio post-workout or in a different session won't affect your recovery that much. If anything, it'll be a light benefit. People take all these stupid supplements and all these stupid vibrators and all these gimmicks to get blood flowing through your body. You know the best way to get blood flowing through your body is walk. And that is a great way to recover. If you have a, a really hard squat day or leg day, the next day going for a walk while getting your nutrition and sleep right is a great way to, to kind of, I don't want to say speed up recovery, but it helps recovery in general just because you're getting blood through the tissue, uh, which can send nutrients there. The only negative impact comes when you start to overdo it neither. So you get a full bodybuilding push pull leg split and then you're trying to do sprints every day, then you're trying to run two miles every night. Now it's gonna negatively impact your recovery on all of it. Again, same idea with the high intensity stuff. If you're doing a bunch of spritz, just because it can add systemic fatigue and fatigue localized to the muscles like sprints, your legs, hammies, quads are gonna be tired, it will affect your training the next day. Not only mentally because of the systemic uh, uh, fatigue, but also locally because those muscles will be taxed from doing sprints. The, the input is similar to doing something like a squat. Um, so the impact will be less performance in the gym. And if your performance is impacted in the gym, then your overall potential to build muscle through those sessions will also be impacted. Um, again, you can do both. You can be pretty good at both but optimizing one or the other is probably gonna be your route. Hopefully that helps you guys out. I honestly think if I just had to choose one thing, the most underrated cardio probably is walking because it's gonna help your heart and get the cardiovascular system, burn a little bit of calories and help recovery. There's almost no negative down effect. Um, if you're a strength athlete, performance athlete, even a bodybuilder, doing something like sprints can be a lot of fun, but it may take away from your training a little bit, which again, if your ultimate goal is to compete, it's probably gonna be rough. Um, if you're someone like me that just wants to look pretty good, get a little bit leaner and you're not totally optimizing your lifting, you could probably sneak in some fun sessions of playing Frisbee basketball or doing some sprints or Metcons and still be good with it. Let me know y'all's favorite type of cardio, man. If you guys play in a league, play a sport, or if you just walk on the treadmill and get her done. Cycling is one of my favorite also, very low impact. You take your bike outside, you get a little fresh air, some vitamin D, and still, if you're not sprinting, you're just going for a cruise, you can get some blood in your legs, keep moving. We over me, man, 3SB.co, Silent Mike, stay tuned tomorrow, big announcement. If you want to follow the Instagram, good company, 3SB on Instagram. Appreciate y'all, catch you in the next one.